Today's lesson is on Laurel Birch. She's an American artist who was born in 1945 and passed away in 2007 of complications from osteoporosis. She was a folk artist. She used very basic shapes to create her characters of, of whatever she was designing, whether it was a tribal mask or the famous Laurel Birch cats. You're going to need a pencil. You need a piece of thick paper, either cardstock or construction paper. And the reasoning is because you're going to be wetting it. Um, just any kind of a spray bottle that sprays as a mist, not a single stream. Uh, you know, like an old bleach container works great. You'll want to use permanent marker. I recommend black, but if you want to just grab the colorful ones and let them pick whatever the color they want to outline it in, that's totally fine. The other thing you need are markers. These are the Crayola regular ones, not the washable. The reasoning is when these get wet, they turn into watercolor and they spread and it's a really cool texture. Now to draw the Laurel Birch Cat, it is a very, very simple um, design. You're going to start off with the foreground, which is the front. There's going to be some cats in the front. You're going to have some behind, which are the middle ground, and then you're going to have a sky, which is your background. So to make the cat, you're going to make a large W with rounded bottom, and make sure that it comes together as one. It doesn't do one of those little wonky Ws. Give it a bottom lip, which is two smiles, and then you want to do a long triangle. For a nose. Now if they want to get silly with this, add a heart to the bottom or whatever, that's totally up to theirs. They can be as creative as they want with it. Now at the top of the triangle, you're going to do a frown and a frown, which go from the point to the end, and then a smile and a smile coming back. Now you're going to do it again, frown frown, smile, smile. Give them some whiskers. I usually keep it at about three. You can do more. Don't, no, don't have to. Give it some um, irises and pupils with parentheses because you can't see the whole circle because there's eyelids. So parentheses and then an oval in the middle. Now, just above the eyes, about pupil to pupil, draw a line, and then a triangle. Inside that triangle, do another triangle. And then finally, shoulders. Make sure it goes all the way to the edge of the paper. So I'm going to draw another one next to them and I'll come back to the video when that one's drawn. All right, I'm back. I've started outlining them as well with my Sharpie. What I wanted to go over with you before I finish the second cat is that I explained to the kids that this is your choo-choo train. Your pencil lines are your tracks. Keep your train on your tracks. If you go off the tracks, you're going to make unnecessary lines you drew those lines for a reason. Stay on them. All right, so now you've got your foreground cats. We're going to add some in the background. Now, if it's a younger class and you just don't think they can do it or you're running out of time because you want to at least give them about 30 minutes to fill these in, um, then don't do the background cats. Just have them color in a background. Totally fine if you want to do it that way. Otherwise, you're going to draw part of a cat. The same way you did the others. And then you got the center nose and then the eyes are coming out. But you notice you can't see it all because they're behind. Once again, if this seems like it's a little too difficult, then don't do it. I want them to have fun and get creative with this. I don't want them stressing out. 
So we got one in the background, and if you want to do another one, you can. Okay, so now we're going to decorate them so they can add polka dots. They can add zebra stripes or tiger stripes, however they want to finish them. And then with the Sharpie, have them sign their name. Once that is done, they're going to switch to markers. If you don't have enough for everybody to have their own set, pair them up or group them. Works just fine. The kids are used to doing that. And then you're going to start filling it in. It does not have to be perfect. You can have some of the white showing because once we wet it, it's going to spread. You can combine two colors. So let's say I do blue down here on one side of it and let's do some green next to it. When they get wet, they'll blend together and they'll be pretty. The only thing I recommend is not to do blue and orange, purple and yellow, and red and green. If you do any combination of those, those, or those, when they get wet, they're going to make kind of a brown. So, uh, especially these two, they're terrible. It, it's kind of like baby poo brownish green. So I don't advise putting orange with blue, yellow with purple, or red with green. Think of a pumpkin in the sky, LSU, and Christmas. So then you're going to fill in anything, any way you want. Tell them not to scribble scratch, even though I am scribble scratching for this project to show you. You can leave some spots white, but I don't recommend too many of them. You want color to blend. You want it to spread. I'm going to do a little more over here. Now watch. You can do stripies too with just the markers. And since pink and purple are similar on the color wheel, I'll do those. So for the uh, per, you know, for the sake of a short video, we're going to pretend that my entire picture, including my sky in the background, is filled in. All right, let's just pretend. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't fill in the pupils. I do recommend sharpieing the pupils. So they don't spread. All right. Now, when you spray it, hold it far enough away that it covers, but um, not too far because you do want water to collect on it. So pretend the whole picture is filled in. Then you're going to spray it and let it saturate. Now I'm going to take you off of the um, the holder that the phone is in and zoom in for you. Alright, so you can see that it's starting to spread. Um, they're starting to blend in little areas like this. Um, I do recommend filling it in a little bit better than the scribble scratch because it does give a really cool look when it's colored in neatly. This is a wet spot right here. If I color it, it's going to spread. See that? It's already getting like the spread look. So it's just um, markers are pretty much watercolors in a pen form. So that's a cool thing. I mean, look at that area right there. It's already spreading pretty well. The eyes are blending. So fill it in really, really well. Spray it down really well. And you'll get a cool looking watercolor Laurel Birch Cat. If they don't want to wet it, 
then it has to be completely filled in. The longer this water sits on these markers, the more they're going to spread. So when they're all finished, I do recommend laying them on the floor out of the walkway from their regular area that they, they do their lessons in and pick them up later on in the day when they are dry. All right. If you have any questions, give me a call. Bye.